If you or a family member have been hurt because of the careless actions of another person, call Walker Texas Lawyer. They'll work to get you the financial compensation and justice you deserve. They have 40 years of experience, and you don't pay unless you win. Call 713-881-9653 today for a consultation or go to walkertexaslawyer.com. Oh, great. What have you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world. And around the world. TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality Brad Gilmore brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Matthew McConaughey. Brad Gilmore. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great introduction. <laughs> Television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Chris Tucker is in the building. Chris Tucker, good morning to you. Hey, Brad, good morning to you. How are you? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary front man of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What lucky to talk to me. Funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now, now your host, host the, the boat, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T. Six Time World Champ, along with my man Brad Gilmore here inside the Hall of Fame with the five minutes of fame. Very, very special guest, the winner of the breakout tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Lola Vice. <laughs> There you go, boy. <laughs> How, you doing? How you doing, Lola? Hi, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with the Hall of Famer, and I'm super excited. Man, you should be excited. You're coming off, you know, the biggest win of your young career, you know, the um, Women's Breakout Tournament. We've seen what the tournament has done for Roxanne Perez, one of my students. Um, yes, she's definitely. I think so um, too. <laughs> I said, you know, put the rocket on you. You know, you're about to go straight to the moon. But now you're inside um, the five minutes of fame. And I just want to, you know, go back to when it first started for you, uh, when you was a little bitty girl. Uh, yeah. What was what was a, a, a young little girl like Lola Vice? What, what, what were you doing? And what were you thinking? So my life has never been normal. <laughs> Um, my father has owned a Taekwondo Academy in Miami for 35 years, and my mom is a teacher. She was also a dancer, but my dad was also a stunt actor back in the day, so he used to do the fight scenes for the movies, but um, he always wanted me and my sisters to be martial artists. He basically trained us like men, like if we were and we had a dream of going to the Olympics. My mom was actually pregnant with me while doing her black belt test, so I was kicking in the womb. This is facts. <laughs> But also at the same time, my mom wanted me to be feminine and elegant and decide what I wanted for my life. So I was extremely in Taekwondo and I was extremely in dance and I did both at the same time. I remember like being little and having my ballet tights and my leotard under my Taekwondo uniform and black belt. And I would go from sparring straight to dance. So I always learned how to do wow. both. Wow, <laughs> amazing. Well, yeah, and then and then you transition into you know, being an MMA fighter. And I guess my question yes. is this, how, in, for in, for you, MMA, what did it teach you that ha has helped you in your pro wrestling journey? Well, so the, the story is, I actually got into MMA when I saw Ronda Rousey do it because Ronda really opens the doors for young female fighters like me to step in. If it weren't for her willpower, you know, I would have never been able to do what I loved then. So I saw Ronda doing it and my mom was sick at the time. She had cancer, but she survived it. I was like, this is how I'm going to get my family out. So I knew my family trained me intense, unlike any other girl. Um, so I knew I could do it if I put my mind to it. But in that world, I learned, you know, to trust my gut and to believe in myself, you know, because at first people saw me very feminine and they didn't think I could actually do it in a cage. So at first it was just proving everyone wrong. And then it was like, wow, I'm proving myself right. And my work ethic matches, you know, my performances. 
And then also in MMA, I learned how to brand myself and not only show myself as a fighter, but show my personality. So I would knock the girls out, I would do my dance. But all of that was organic and just true to me and what I've been doing my whole life. Yeah, um, speaking of life, uh, that combat life, it's a lot of bumps and bruises. <laughs> it's a lot of bumps and bruises. And, and, and you are, you're, you're a beautiful girl. You're a beautiful Thank girl. You. Um, what is it like, um, actually after, you know, one of those knockdown drag outs to where, you know, you are puffed up where your eye is black and, you know, your lip is yeah. swollen and you, and you wake up that next day, you know, talk to me about that. Yeah. Well, honestly, the training of MMA was actually more difficult than the actual fight, you know, the cutting weight and the fight camp is intense part, but, you know, I have 25 itches, um, stitches in this eye. Uh, wow. I have bruises all over my body. I would wear like dresses and try to look pretty and take my pictures, but I was always banged up. I have cauliflower in my ears and I knew it was like a sacrifice I needed to make to get to where I wanted to be in my life and prove myself that I don't just care about my looks. I truly wanted to be a fighter, but now <laughs> I could truly be myself and like be my feminine self because MMA, MMA was very gory, and I think a lot of people want to say they're fighters, but they've never actually experienced what that is, going through eating disorders, going through fight camps, losing 25 pounds in three weeks to make a weight, wearing those plastic bags, almost passing out in saunas constantly. I've been doing this since I was 11, 12 years old, and, you know, I think all of that made me very strong to endure this world that I started with the WWE. Oh, awesome. Man, Wow. <laughs> Well, you know, but making the transition into WWE, obviously now you're the breakout star in NXT. And, and, and the name is Lola Vice, which I think is a great Booker has always told me since I've known him, you got to have a championship name. You're going to be somebody, you got to have a championship name. Lola Vice is already established as a championship name. Where did, where like did, it? what is the origins of the name itself? Where did that idea come from for Lola Vice? So Lola, actually my sister and I, since we were little, we had an inside joke. Like our, our Cuban nail lady, her name was Lola. And we would always like, oh, I'm Lola and you're Nina. And we would play around like that. And when it came to the time to like um, decide my name, I was like, I like Lola because it's Hispanic, but easy for everyone to pronounce. And I feel like it goes with me. And then Vice was because inspired by the Miami Vice series back in the 80s. I'm born and raised in Miami. Um, I come from a family of Cuban immigrants and I just, the Miami Vice colors and the Vice is just who I am at a heart. And I know that if I could really relate to something, I could translate that in the ring and it's worked for me. And I love my name now. I actually prefer it more than Valerie. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I listen to, um, you know, in the air tonight. And, uh, that's when I, I, um, um, was first, um, uh, was looking at Miami Vice, um, uh, back <laughs> in the day. And, um, uh, I remember, um, uh, uh, Crockett saying um, the Tubbs, you know, this is Miami, pal. Where well, you got to know the play, you got to you got to know the players. You got to have a program down here. Yes, another amateur. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I actually got a lot of inspiration. I still that a quote from that normal. movie, man. It's so freaking stupid, right? You're, you're all players, Sonny. <laughs> you're all players, Sonny. I used to love My it. God loves to say that. Oh man, I'm gonna. Uh, I remember talking to you um, 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 one day at the PC, and um, it was after I spoke about you on the, uh, on the on the Hall of Fame, and I was talking about how Lola Vice seemed to be like picking this up like crazy. It seemed like she's well advanced, um, more so than you know, just you know, just jumping into the business. It seemed like you know the the intangibles of um, getting in the ring, and 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 I remember you telling me, you know, I'm gonna be the best at this. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it, you know, where did that come from and, and what is it going to take for you to be the best in the WWE? And I'm not just talking about it, NXT. I'm talking about the, the main roster. I'm talking about, you know, um, WrestleMania moments. What is it going to take for Lola Vice to get to that point? Well, I speak that way because, number one, I know my work ethic, ethic matches my words. And I think a lot of people say I'm going to be the best, but they don't put in the work. And I do that. So I know every time I step in that ring, I'm confident because I'm extremely prepared more than anyone else. But I think a big part of this business is being reliable, being able to perform at all times, being able to adapt. And I think everything that my life has thrown at me, I've been able to overcome it. I actually perform better under pressure, under the big lights, 
um, in MMA, my first professional debut, and people don't understand this, I was 20 years old, my professional debut was in the Mohegan Sun Arena, pay-per-view, no shin guards for the first time in my life, first round knockout. My second fight in MMA was in the Madison Square Garden. So this is something that I know that if I put in the work, as soon as I get there, I'm going to perform. And here in the WWE is no different. Every time I go in there, I give it 100%. My work ethic, I'm there every single day. I still haven't taken a day off. I haven't taken a vacation. I'm completely committed to this, and I am going to be the best female sports entertainer in the history of the WWE. Boom! You know, we were just talking about um, John <laughs> Cena and all of those qualities that you just mentioned. John Cena, he had all of those qualities. Uh, and, and the one more so... I than, love John Cena. <laughs> me too. The one more so than most um, that they got to be able to trust you, to be able to get all of yeah. that done and and i really um uh, i really feel like uh you got all the ability to but i do have to earn that though and i do understand that like i'm earning that trust but i'm willing to do that every single time i'm given an opportunity well that that's what it's all about um you know taking those opportunities and no matter what that opportunity is go out there and make it the best i always said you know like my brother told me you know no matter what the job is you do the job to the best of your ability to whatever's next uh comes along and that's what mm -hmm. i really really see with lola vice i'm gonna tell you right now you definitely uh about to get the rocket put on you after winning that, <laughs> that tournament. You're about to go straight to the moon. I always talk about the Nebula, <laughs> baby, all the way out there in the stratosphere, man. Um, and you do. I believe love your tag team, by the way, Harlem Heat. Hey man, you know we was like <laughs> we was like uh, Lola Vice. We used to bring that that hot hot Cholula green uh -huh. and put it on the, on the regular uh, yeah, that's <laughs> spice, man, and put it on, 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 on a regular basis. But in parting, uh, what do you want to leave uh, um, um, the fans with? What do you want to tell the fans um, about Lola Vice before we let you get up out of the Hall of Fame? Well, Lola Vice, you know, has been through a lot in her life, but she never backs down. She doesn't fear anyone. She always has a lot of passion. And not only am I representing myself, but I'm representing a whole culture of young Latinas like me that I've opened. I'm actually the first Cuban American woman in history to sign here. Wow. So there's so many young girls in Miami. When I go back home, they're like, Lola, Lola. And it just means so much to me that they're all doing my little dances because my mission in this world is to represent women. And you can be beautiful, you can be badass, you can fight in the cage, and anything you put your mind to, you can make it happen if you believe in yourself. Oh yeah, man, I love it, man, I love it. I really <laughs> wanna thank you for um, giving me some time and stepping inside the Hall of Fame, getting your five minutes of fame. And I can't yes. wait to see the, um, the rise of Lola Vice. It's already started, but I'm gonna tell you, I see great things in your future. And again, thank you for um, stepping inside the Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me for having me here and I'm looking forward to continue working with you and seeing awesome. you Tuesdays and you know, everything from here on, we're going up. Oh yeah. Hey guys, stick around, you're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute.